so have you ever wondered how people publish so many research papers and how people read those if you want to publish one under your name you are at the right place because pujita will help you today our speaker today will share some of important lessons that she learned while publishing papers as an undergraduate student researcher let's welcome our speaker pujita garg a computer science graduate currently working as a research intern at georgia tech and iit roper a technology lover who applies her knowledge of programming in real world use cases she has authored four technical publications and she has been granted a patent for one of her inventions i know that sounds so cool over to you pujita thank you so much hema that was a wonderful introduction um let me just share my screen Okay, so let me know um, if my screen is visible. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, thank you all uh, for joining. So I'm really excited for the talk. Um, research being one of my pa like passions, actually. So um, now let's begin. So let's begin a hitchhiker's guide to publishing research articles. So a little brief introduction about me. So hi everyone, nice to meet you all. I'm Pujita Garg. I'm an engineer, developer, and researcher. Um, I'm working as a research intern at Georgia Tech and IIT Roper remotely um, right now. I have, um, as I also told, I have authored four research publications, um, and I am also a passionate advocate for women in technology and actively volunteer at Women Who Code Python and Mobile Tracks. You can get in touch with me at my Twitter handle, which is mentioned. I would love to speak to you all. Um, let's get into today's agenda. So in this session, we will go over like three major things. The first being are the generic steps which you can follow to publish your first research article. The second would be that you will go over the two most popular types of uh, scientific publications, which is research articles and review articles. Um, without going into a lot of depth about how to write a research article, but I would be sharing a basic structure of both of these types of articles. The third would be, I would be, you know, that's a bonus kind of a thing. I would be sharing a few of my personal learnings, um, which I uh, like, uh, which would in form of like tips for you all, so which you can follow. And yes, and at the end, we would be having a short Q&A session. So without further ado, let's begin our first uh, you know, first section of the presentation, which is the five steps that you can follow to publish your first research article or like any numbers of the article um, you may. So publishing your research is an important step in, an, in your academic career, right? So while there isn't a one size fits all approach for publishing, here are five typical steps, which are usually, you know, a researcher takes to publish. Uh, so first of all, um, it is choosing your target journal. So this is kind of the crucial step that can directly affect the reach and impact of your research. So you, um, you know, the best is to consult your advisor or mentor if you have any. And that, uh, so that person, because he's like more knowledgeable and has more experience would help you in choosing the best and best suitable journal for your uh, research work. So while you are choosing the target journal, there are usually some metrics which are associated with a particular journal. So one of the popular one is the impact factor. So you can easily find the impact factors with the journals on their websites. They are usually broadly advertised like what is the impact factor of a particular journal. And so basically that is to evaluate the relative importance of the journal within its field. So the higher the impact factor, you know, it's considered to be like a more good quality journal, you can say. And also if it's, it's a very high impact factor journal, it's also very difficult to get in, get your research paper in. 
so you need to have that much uh, that quality of work so um let's talk about several advantages of choosing a target journal before starting to write one so um so first thing which like first to the adv first advantage is that once you know your target journal you can tailor your research paper to build on that research that is uh, already published in the journal so like you know where you want to go you know where where what is the target so you can kind of uh, format as well as you know you can make it as uh, uh, like as, as of that quality you know so that it gets eventually accepted in the in your target journal the second is that um, every journal will have its own formatting specifications which you need to follow so once you choose a journal then you will know that these are the specifications which you need to take care of while writing uh, your um, article which will ultimately improve your chances of getting acceptance in that journal so that's it we come to step number 2 which is writing your research article so writing um, you know there are abundant of um, let's say tips and templates and everything on the web you know there are so many links which you can follow like the whole uh, you know how to write your first research article or how to write papers so what kind of questions you need to ask yourself while writing the paper in different um, sections of the paper so you can start with any but it is always practice that will improve your writing um style it will improve how you how you you know write a scientific research paper so it's always practice practicing and writing improving so it's an iterative process basically so you can start with a template what you can do is start with a template now there are also like each uh, kind of journal mostly journals they provide a template as well because the template can be a latex template or a word template so it will have all the uh, at least you will get to know what the formatting specifications are like which how uh, what font size to use or how which and what kinds of sections or how much the uh, like the page limits should be like whether it's an eight page article or you can submit up to 30 pages so all those things also the reference style which format to use for references etc there are a lot of things you need to take care of but again it's always an iterative process so you make the first draft you kind of reiterate over it you make other drafts so that's all about uh, writing you know uh, your research paper the other things you need to take care while writing um the paper is that you need to know your target journal understand what kind of audience uh, like you want to target also how to you uh, choose the appropriate keywords so every uh, journal of your field will have some specific you know which type keywords which they are looking for in in a research paper which they want to accept so you also need to choose them appropriately also the right way to structure your manuscript um then the next point is types of research papers so there are many types of research papers it can be an analytical paper it can be an argumentative one definition one cause and effect etc but um, i would tell you that many of these types of articles are really not relevant to an engineering uh, field so like if you're talking about engineering type of articles like where there's some technology involved or something so mostly uh, some few of these uh, would be only for like biological sciences or like the sciences um type of papers scientific papers so um majorly in our field what we uh, what i have seen is that there will be two kinds of papers majorly which is review articles and the research articles which we will discuss in detail um shortly also i have written a blog um i have started a blog series on medium and i would love uh, zareen to post the link for that as well so i have kind of posted my first article in that blog series about publishing research articles there i have tried to you know add as much uh, like links as possible so i have also added like five seven links which i found really interesting and really in depth about how to write your research paper so it's it's like a whole um, talk in itself so you might refer to them as well
Okay, so once you're done with all the um, iterations over the drafts you have created for your article and you are finally satisfied with one, you need to submit it. Now each journal, again, as I told earlier, will have some specific submission requirements as well. So you need to visit your journal website and carefully check through the instructions for authors for your chosen journal. So there's always, you know, the whole like a web page uh, dedicated to instruction for authors on how to submit your paper. So you must read it carefully. Then search for a submit article or submit page um, on the journal website and then submit your article. So while submitting also, you will uh, be prompted to, you know, add like uh, authors and co-authors and article information. <clears throat> Sorry, um, writing. Um, also, you might want uh, might need to like write an effective um, cover letter for your um, article and provide contact information, etc. Then just attach your article and submit the details. Um, but you know the story doesn't end here. Like once you have submitted your article, still there might be uh, you know at times there is. Uh, like modifications needed, which will be uh, communicated by the journal to you. So let's understand how we navigate through the peer review process after which some uh, modifications might be suggested. But let's, let's talk about first, what is actually a peer review? So the journals can be many types, like they can be peer reviewed journals or they may not be a peer reviewed journal. Peer review is basically uh, the independent assessment of your research article by independent experts in your field. So uh, basically what the journal would do is, he will, uh, he will have some you know, reviewers um, in his list okay, in, uh, of that field. And what the uh, journal would do is, would like give your article to these, uh, let's say three reviewers, uh, which are experts in your field. And they would like read it thoroughly. They would suggest uh, modifications or will basically they will be responsible for accepting or rejecting your paper. So this process acts as an important form of quality control for research papers, as well as is a very useful source of feedback. So helping you to improve your paper before it's published. So usually what happens is that after the peer review process, like, like you know that nothing is perfect right so there will be you know certain modifications needed so the the peer reviewers would give comments on your paper individually they will give comments and you that's upon you if you want to take their suggestions or not but you have to like provide some answer some like relevant answers to their comments that whether you are taking a suggestion so you will point out to uh, okay this is the change which i have made as per suggested or if you're not, if you don't think that that's a valid suggestion, valid suggestion that you should incorporate, then you might provide a reasonable, uh, you know, um, answer or a reason for that. So that's all about you know peer review um, process. So later on, once all the peer review process has been completed, you have received uh, modifications. Let's say you decide to you know, go ahead with the modifications and then resubmit your paper. There will be at the end some decision which is acknowledged by the decision acknowledgement by the journal. So there can be majorly three kinds of decisions which you might receive. So the first one is, as you can see that it's accepted. So wonderful, congratulations that your first paper has been accepted. Um, but the there can be other types of um, you know, decision, which is, let's say, rejected with modifications. So this is the basically uh, after the peer review, if they find that, you know, it's um, your um, article is not good as it is, but if modified, it might suit better to the journal's requirements. So then you may, if you want to go forward with that, then you will be, uh, you know, uh, you will have to do those suggested modifications. So that might be another case. The last one is, you know, it's rejected. So um, sometimes um, journal doesn't think, the editor of the journal doesn't think that it's fit for their journal, so they might reject it. And But here, don't lose hope. I would say because one, like if you are a beginner, 
in this whole arena of research then you are like bound to your papers are bound to get rejected at the first at the starting okay so um, but usually the journals they actually communicate some valid reasons and some, some reasons which uh, uh, are for rejecting your um, articles so so the article could be rejected be even before it went for the peer review so that means that the, they might say that this is this is not what they are looking for for their journal or doesn't suit the theme of the journal or if if they if the peer if they, it went over to the peer review process and the reviewers didn't think that it's a, a suitable fit for the journal that will also be communicated and also sometimes they give actual comments that particular comments that okay this is the thing but for which we are rejecting this is not fine so you like you can improve upon it and then again submit it to the same journal or the other that's upon you okay so this completes the first section uh, which were the steps for publishing the research article now let's move on to the second section of the talk which is the types of research papers <clears throat> So, um, so we will be talking about two major kinds of research articles. Uh, uh, first one is the re research articles themselves. So what basically they are. So they paint a good picture of how a particular research has been implemented by its authors. Now, basically they will uh, you know, present an original work done by the authors. Whereas a review article is generally just an overview of a specific subject by examining previously published studies on the topic. So they are not, uh, they are not basically a, a, an original work or something, or something like new invention by the author. They are just an overview of the subject, which the chosen subject by, previ uh, by examining previously published studies. So basically what they try to achieve is that they try to imp uh, interpret the outcomes of the chosen studies. So they try to see how similar are the, uh, uh, has the work which is actually being done or they attempt to explain the conflicting results of the previously done studies. So um, when we talk about uh, review papers, they actually give a very, uh, they are also very valuable scientific, provide valuable scientific um, literature as they summarize the findings and then try to make sense of those findings of the existing literature. So basically literature is what? That the all the kinds of papers or the studies or the inventions which has been done till now for that field. So that's its existing literature, right? So now review articles will like, let's say choose um, like, let's say past 20 years of studies which has been conducted for that particular theme and they will try to find some pattern try to find try to uh, see why there are conflicting results if there are and other things so kind of analyzing it so these provide a good current knowledge and understanding of a specific topic which is very useful for beginner researchers so if you think of some topic like this is what i want to research on this is the first step you do. You see what kinds of studies have already been done in that topic for that topic in the past years. And then you try to build upon um, it or try to kind of create something very different from the past studies. So how to distinguish, like how, how if you if you're provided with a paper, how would you know that which has worked? In, um, in the research articles, because it is denoting something, some original work, like something, some new invention, there you can find some uh, keywords, some specific keywords, like there would be statements like we tested or I measured or we investigated, okay? There can be phrases like the study found, the results indicate. So because there's a finding, there's, a, uh, there's some original work, there's some uh, experiment, so there will be some results. In the review articles, there won't be any results uh, as such, like because there's no actual experimentation. And um, 
Okay, so now we'll also, you know, briefly go over the structures of both of these uh, kinds of articles. So I would like Zareen to like post the links for these articles. So I'll be going over like um, just the screenshots of a couple of pages of such articles, but you can read and see for yourself if you want to, um, if you're curious about. Um, the articles are like, I'm authors and co-author for both of these articles. So first of all, we will see the research articles. Okay, so the first page of the research article when we start. So first of all, there's this innovation written that will tell you that, okay, this is some, you know, it's talking about some invention. So sometimes some journals, they tend to distinguish with the keyword themselves. Then um, it will start with a title, authors, their affiliations, that's common for both. Then you will have an abstract, so the abstract basically introduces the subject or the focus um, of the research. Then um, there will be introduction. So in the research paper, there is also um, some amount of literature review involved because obviously when you think of doing something new, you will obviously see what has already been done, right? So that is considered as a literature review. So in the introduction, in a research article, you tend to provide some introduction, uh, some um, past studies as well. So it will be, it will have a review of literature in the field, okay? In introduction, they will all, you will also identify the problem which you're trying to solve in the rest of your paper. You will explain the purpose of your investigation, give some background, et cetera. Later after the introduction, you will have materials and methodology. So since it was a, like a data analysis kind of paper in which uh, analysis was involved, in, like not much of materials were required, but if it's like something electronic, electrical type and some materials are there, then you might also have a material section. Then you have a methodology section. You will be exactly explaining what kind of process you were, uh, you like, what approach you uh, took to um, get the end results and other things. So we'll describe like in depth about um, everything, the research procedure, the data source, the parameters and algorithms used, and also the reasons why you used this algorithm, why you didn't use the other one, and all the um, analysis, let's say if you're doing some statistical analysis, all the kinds of things would be there in methodology. So you can create, obviously create subsections and stuff. And um, yeah, so that's all about the methodology. So then the next section would be the results. So the outcomes and findings are often presented visually using charts and graph as well as in the text form. So it is always better if you use more and more tables, more like graphical representations of the results or any um, statistics which are involved. So charts and graphs are always um, suggested to be used in a, uh, while writing a research paper because they are obviously, uh, you can, you are, they are better interpreted by the readers, right? So um, in the results, you will definitely mention all the outcomes and find it. Later, um, next section would be the discussion. So in the discussion, what you will do is you will provide a summary and interpretation of the major results and findings. So yes, you did some work, you explained the methodology. Now you, you also wrote down the what uh, outcomes you, you got out of the experiment. But now you will also have to discuss it. In the discussion, you know, you might want to compare your study with some previous study which you built upon that they did this, this, we followed this or like it can be any kind of discussion or how the results which you have got actually impact that uh, problem which you were trying to solve okay so you can have any uh, you can you know have any direction for your discussion but it is generally um, an important component because as a reader you always want to know you know what is like what's the importance of the study or how did this study impact the problem in hand? So that's what you do in discussion. 
at the end you will always have a conclusion so that's again common for all kinds of articles we'll have a conclusion where you will just summarize the contributions of the study um like and also you may point uh, want to point out some gaps or some limitations of the research or some inconsistencies in the conclusion um and that can also be pointed in the discussion um after that there are some um like other sections which are like acknowledgments so some journals may want you to also like you may want to acknowledge the funding agencies let's say right so that comes under acknowledgement then there may be disclosure statement which is just that there's no potential conflict of interest between the authors so this just a uh, like line you need to write in disclosure statement then you have references which is again common and a very very crucial part of um you know writing a research article because in research article it's all needs to be facts and the the facts also need to be supported by references so um it's not like blogging okay so you need to like have references for each and every statement you put in the research article so all those you know um uh sources like like there's book you might have taken something from a book okay this fact is backed uh, by this fact in the book this book the articles you have included and all the other citations would be there in references so that was all for the research uh, the major like majority of the research articles would have um these kind of sections now let's talk about the structure of a review paper so um most of the review papers would be having like let, like i have this um heading this title of a review on this topic the plumetric landmark detection techniques so this review keyword might might not be there but this is how um this is again common there will be title there will be authors there will be their affiliations and stuff later on there will be an abstract again the same abstract has the same purpose of identifying the subject and focus then um then you'll have an introduction again but like there we had some portion of literature review also in the introduction but because a review paper is like strictly based on the literature review only so we won't we'll, uh, we won't put literature review in the introduction so in introduction what it will do is because um like think of review paper as you know a lesson of your um like a subject book so let's say if we are doing maths then one lesson of your maths which is you know uh, which is focusing on one topic of that subject so if i've taken a review on cephalometric landmark identification detection techniques so this uh, this topic i will be explaining like as much as possible in this review paper so introduction will provide the background information it will define the major concepts okay so in cephalometric landmark detection techniques what is cephalometry what are landmarks what are the detection techniques so all these things would be defined and explained in the introduction then we talk about the body the body of the uh, review article would would essentially have the review the literature review so that's the major uh, part of the body the body could be um, like organized in the uh, in in different ways the most common ones are chronologically so the dates of the publications the dates when the publications were published so you can kind of do it chronologically you may organize it thematically like the major topics or issues or you can do it met, uh, do it according to methodology so the by the methodology uh, like um the study design basically of uh, the each paper you were um you are like reviewing okay so in this particular paper um we have chosen methodology to be the you know the uh, theme of for structuring the paper so you can see that there here in this um block diagram and this is based on the methodologies so the la landmark detection techniques will can uh, detection techniques based on their methodologies could be divided into these many types 
so then uh, for individual cases there are certain uh, number of publications which has been reviewed so again um, you can see that graphs and and these tables are really important um, especially in a review article because there there will be a lots of text involved because you are reviewing so many publications earlier past studies so try to you know organize them try to also have some pictorial uh, representations okay so that is always um, suggested while writing papers so um, here you can see that there is also some kind of you know it's not just that you read some papers and you are just writing summaries about it in a review article you also have to kind of find out some um, by bringing these uh, like men articles together you also need to point out some contradictions or some commonalities or some consistencies or inconsistencies between these studies so there sometimes you are and to have like some comparative analysis of these studies okay so there has to be some analysis involved also these kind of review articles highlight important scholars so because you are writing about the past studies of a specific topic so you are also highlighting important scholars who are working on the same theme as you now at the end of the body you might also you know because you have um, you are writing a review article so you have done a good amount of study in, on that on that uh, topic so you might also now be in a position to have some challenges have some open challenges which you can this okay which you have found over reading those many number of papers so uh, when you're writing a review paper it's not reading just 10 or 20 publications you need to have like 50 60 like like lots and lots of publications some review articles have hundreds of publications which have been reviewed because you have to give a thoroughly reviewed um uh, you know thoroughly you need to review the every like let's say you are taking past 20 years so there will be lots and lots of uh, publications for in last 20 years so you need to thoroughly review them so here um we have also tried to give some open challenges so um which is also uh, like a good thing to include in a review article later on again uh, so at the last again um, there will be a conclusion to just summarize what you found in the uh, while doing the study then acknowledgments same declaration of com uh, competing interest is same and again references okay so um now we, after we have discussed all these things now we are at the last part of today's talk which where i will be sharing few of my lessons as tips to you all so that you you know can include in your um while you're starting your research journey so the first tip which i would like to uh, give you and is that in research you need to be patient you know you need to be patient you need to be confident be calm so this is very important because you know when when we are a beginner and we haven't really experienced this whole research um you know research part so we always think that it's a quick thing like like all the other things in our life so it's it's actually not a quick process it it takes lot and lots of time so i'll tell you that when i was writing my first research paper um it it uh, so this was the the review article which we just discussed that was my first research article and because since it was a review article it it took me like around 3 to 4 months to um uh, for me and for my co-authors to kind of um you know create this paper once we submitted it took one year to get published and in that one year uh, we had like two major revisions and two minor revisions and it was like a long long process so one one and a half year so it takes like one year it can take almost two years as well so journals they tend to have tend to like have this whole peer review process and then all the revisions and stuff so the, uh, especially in journals it is a very long process to get your paper published 
and also not even that sometimes you know when you are just starting you actually have no first hand experience of writing a scientific article so you tend to you know make mistakes and obviously everyone would so many uh, many times you would face like constant rejections as well from many journals so at that time you just need to be patient you need to always remember that research is a long term thing even if it's your first project or even if it's you have done many research projects it would take time first it takes time to like build your uh, product or project or whatever the experiment which you are conducting it take it will take time and later on publishing it will take time so um so what you can do is that if you want to publish it in a journal then you need to first you should know that it will take a lot of time and secondly you should like have at least two three journals in mind because if it gets like when we say like the first step uh, choosing the target journal so choose like more than one target journal so that you have a backup that if it gets rejected from one then you might kind of improve upon it and then submit it to other uh, like that secondly conferences if you want like your uh, research should um, get published very quickly then usually conferences if you submit it in a conference uh, conferences tend to take very less time as compared to journals to publish articles if they accept it okay so if you are in a need of getting a research article published and it should be quick one then try uh, to target con good conferences rather than journals okay so the second uh, lesson which i learned and this was like a great advice from one of my mentors so it is uh, it is basically associated with while you are writing your research while you are drafting your paper with asking why to yourself at every line so basically um, you while you are writing a research article let's say let's start from introduction okay in introduction when you are writing anything like any background okay anything so you need to ask at every line ask why to yourself like why are you why is this line like written is there any facts that need to back this statement which you wrote okay because the readers you should think about the audience who is going to read your paper they want to know everything about it so they do, you don't want to keep them wondering about okay this uh, like why have this why is this thing relevant or what is the reason behind uh, that line also another thing here is that when you are documenting your let's say methodology or the uh like the experiment it's not always that you write what worked for you like let's say you have to achieve certain task and you have two algorithms a and b which can possibly achieve that task so if you tried both one worked one didn't work okay you need to also document the other one which did not work because then that will help the readers to know and potential um for the future researchers who are going to maybe build upon your research that okay this didn't work you might have figured out reasons why this th why one approach worked and why it didn't so you have to document each and everything so in that case you need you need to ask that if you're writing this line are there any references which needs to be attached with uh, this particular statement is this a fact that needs to be uh, ref, uh, added a reference for so all these things are included in um, this step which is ask why at every line so just think about the readers who are going to read your paper okay so this is the last and final step which is keep a diary okay so what usually happens is that most of the times what we do is we tend to do our practical work which is whatever the experiment or you know uh, writing an algorithm or maybe prototyping a project so what of the initial practical work is we tend to do it firstly and then we start uh, writing our research article so what happens is that we are tend to forget things like especially we would know that this thing worked but we won't 
we you know our mind won't remember maybe that okay this worked and this did not work or you also tried this and why did not work so try to keep a diary especially uh, to you know document all your setbacks or breakthroughs in research so everything should be documented while you are practically implementing the project and so that it will it will definitely help you when you start writing your project uh, writing about your project in form of the research article at the end so always do that never like take it for granted that you will remember everything at the end because there are many um, you know small small things uh, can be very crucial while writing your article so you know keep that in mind and always document it while you are practically implementing your project so yeah, so these were all the tips i wanted to share i hope you all enjoyed happy researching and yeah so i'm open to questions okay okay one dindi asked um first of all thank you for the session pujira um thank you one, so much um through your experience what are the best ways to get additional support for writing papers at gtech when you are a remote student and don't have a mentor assigned um i'm sorry can you repeat the question please yeah uh, through your experience what are the best ways to get additional support for writing papers at gtech uh, i guess she means technology uh, when you are a remote student and you don't have a mentor assigned so i guess what she um, what they meant to ask was how they can uh, write their own paper without any mentor okay um yes you can actually independently publish articles it's not necessary to have a mentor to publish articles um it's it's actually the same uh, way um so what mentor would do is like based on their experience they would they can guide you better like maybe which target journal uh, you should you know which journal you could target or um help you in iterating over your drafts but um, if you uh, if you don't have a mentor then um you can um obviously go ahead with your own research with um i think that will help uh, that will you know in that way you will have to research more about research itself like if you don't have a mentor so kind of go on web you need to uh, see the templates see um if you finally decided on a journal then read their publications the, the publications which are already published in that journal recently which have been published so see you uh, go uh, read uh, read about them so you need to um actually kind of i would say research about research then yeah um yeah. um by the way uh, this who this person asked i have another um helpful tip for you that we have a research paper discussion club so you can join um the women who could research uh, paper discussion club so you can get um some mentoring mentoring also i guess you can also group up with some people and write the uh, research paper article so that can also be helpful for you um another question that has been asked is uh, what are some uh, examples of journal to start with as beginner that you have in mind um actually uh, when you talk about these research journals uh, they are very much specific to the topic you want to um, basically um, research about so when you have decided a topic and then you will see uh, you will kind of research about what kind of journals are available for in that field so there are no like uh, there are not any journal journal journals like generally they don't accept like all of the kinds of research in one journal so there will be very specific journals for different things like if it's say ai then there will be many uh, journals which have ai specific things and might not accept some other kind of technology based research so there will be technology based uh, journals there can be uh, journals which are dedicated to some specific applications let's say medical applications let's say some other kind of education uh, technologies so there will be application type journals as well so once you've decided upon 
uh, what topic you want to re uh, like research, then you search about the journals which are specific to that topic. So actually, I can't give you a, a list of journals, but that's what you need to research about for yourself. Okay, so just find the domain first which you are interested mm -hmm. in, and then uh, go for um, the hit like uh, which uh, specific journals that comes under those domain, and then write yeah. papers on that. Yeah, so in when you are finding a journal, so you will get like multiple choices between journals. So then we, uh, such matrix like impact factors comes into play that you see what the impact factor is. If you are just a beginner and not very confident about the kind of and quality of research which you did, you might start mm -hmm. with a beginner uh, kind of impact factor. So impact factors can range from, you know, in points like 0 0.5, 0 0.25 to 10, 20, 50 also yeah, at oh. times. So so you can kind of do the math there and kind of start with the like depending upon you know the quality of research that a work that you have done can choose um hi dahlia uh, she has uh, she has a question uh, what do you recommend when you are stuck writing a paper uh when you stuck writing a paper like are you talking about um like how stuck what kind of stuck writing okay. a paper uh, Daria, can you just be more specific like in which when you are thinking about writing a paper or uh, is it about in the middle or uh, when you are researching something so can you be um i guess Daria, you can be more specific uh, pujita can answer that mentally stuck she uh, she's saying mentally stuck um so i guess it's like maybe the one that you mentioned that um one needs to have patience so i guess she's she needs some tips on that okay um so i think uh you know when you are documenting your research in a in a scientific kind of way in a research paper it's it's very less of a chance like mentally stuck like we say sometimes when we are writing a blog or something we say it's a writer's block right you're not able to have a new idea about what to write or something like that it generally doesn't happen in research articles because it's actually documenting something which an experiment which you did you already know how you did it you already know its findings so if it's mentally stuck i if i'm interpreting the question right then i don't think you need to like worry a lot about that and if it's if the question is something else then you can please um you know kind of okay what correct might me on this um like if i'm a person if i'm doing some research and um before writing i'm doing research mm -hmm. then if i um stuck on that period while doing my mm -hmm. analysis or something then what should i do Mm, it depends on um, so you're talking about you getting stuck in a in your practical work like yes. let's say if, if you talk about data science you have some data you are analyzing it and you got stuck there if you're talking about that like um, try to yeah, change the algorithm or something uh, okay. it, it depends <laughs> yeah okay. it depends on the implementation yeah okay so yeah. Yeah. Dalia said that you have answered her uh, questions correctly. So that's good. Okay, great, great, Dalia. Um, is the impact factor a uniform system of measuring the quality of the journal or is it varied system? So um, what I've come across is that there are like, I think there are a few other metrics as well, which can be and uh, used. And there are also some like debate about whether impact factors should be the best way to judge articles, which have come across like through some blogs and Quora and stuff. So you might research for your own that in your field, which is the best metric. So impact factor is a very journalized way. It's a very journalized way. Uh, like nowadays, you can see that just by the name of the journal, you won't know maybe, but um, so it's an impact factor which you can judge. So there are also like publishers, like there's Elsevier, there's Springer. Mm -hmm. uh, so depending uh, upon the publisher also, you might want to target some journal that if you want to publish in Elsevier, then see that each publisher will have many journals in them uh, amongst themselves also. So 
if you want to like you have a target publisher like let's say some one wants to publish an elsewhere so there are journals for that as well so you need to actually do some research in your specific to your field so it's very field specific okay got it um if you have any queries field specific question or the one person that who asked you can write again um we have another question based on your experience what is the best way to get started with writing a writing part of the research paper should we uh, start with the latex template um itself directly especially when you have lot of co authors and a lot of stuff that gets done parallelly for different sections of the paper yeah so um i think based on your questions um i think i'll answer the first part first mm -hmm. so you can you can start with the latex template or you can start with generally with a word template that's all upon you like whichever way you are comfortable with like i uh, kind of never use latex templates because i was not comfortable with that in initially so i used just the word templates but that's upon you uh, whichever template you would like or even if you want initially want to write in a exactly in a template form don't write it make a draft mm -hmm. like initially like you write your assignments or just make a draft initially in a word document and then you can kind of characterize your data like your texts based on the different uh, based on the structure of the uh, kind of research paper you are writing let's say you just write introduction methodology in the same way uh, like in in the same section and then you can uh, later on put it into the right template okay so that's all upon uh, it depends on you the way you are comfortable with let uh, the last uh, the second uh, thing which you are saying that if you have a lot of co authors so um the best is that you know um you can divide yourself like on like say if there's seven people two people are doing are working on the same section then i think google um docs is the best way i think for you know uh, for writing parallelly so i think you can use google docs to create your uh initial drafts and then put it into the template format okay thanks um another question uh, is there any issues with the publication if i am not affiliated with a research institution or university um i'm not very sure i don't think there will be like an issue kind of like it i don't think it would result in any acceptance or rejection based on this thing that if you're not affiliated i don't know uh, you can definitely be an independent researcher i have seen people who have independently published researches um this thing is that when you have a mentor like if you have a mentor who is a professor who is affiliated to a university then they can, they are usually are the corresponding of they tend to be they they are usually the corresponding authors what it means is that their contact information will be used as a primary source of communication between the journal and you, you like your team of authors so they would communicate to that corresponding author okay so when they see that that corresponding author is a fully like a affiliated person with the university so they have a permanent kind of you can say address say that okay you are communicating so but that's not a necessity uh, as far as i know you can definitely be an independent researcher and um, publish at your own i guess there is no uh, limit of like if you have to be a student because i can be yeah definitely because i am i'm also working so i if i want to res, uh, write a research paper so i can but um, th there is no need but i guess you can google it and you can ask someone uh, but i'm not i don't think there is any restrictions from there no 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 with... definitely there is not a restriction that if you're a student or a teacher you can be anyone can write a paper it's just that if you have an affiliation then um it's just because uh there's the corresponding thing uh, which i have come across so far so uh but i don't think it should be a necessity for uh, you being accepted by a journal or not mm -hmm. yeah sure yes all the questions have been answered um 
thanks vujita hoping for more uh, such you know uh, such helpful um real sessions ahead um, yeah I'm thank you so for, much i'm also looking forward to write one this year like start writing at least and will of course ping you you can also all you guys yeah yeah also. definitely yeah yeah um be in touch with me um, you had met with her like it's at the rate pujita guys only so be in touch with me you can you know ping me anytime i would love to help all the best for your research journeys and thank you so much for joining um, you know it, it's a really important topic for me so i loved talking about it um thank you so much uh, zareen for hosting me and hema for moderating my session thank you so much attendees for uh, you know joining and boosting my confidence <laughs> yeah so of much. course i guess hope everyone will think about it today that what they should do next and how they can write publish uh, their research paper also yeah all the best everyone thanks everyone thanks for joining um soon there we will be publishing uh, um the recording in the resource channel for the slack you can also join our uh, research paper channel uh, uh, research paper discussion club channel that we have on slack and um, maybe you you might find a topic also what you have to write about and you can also um, uh, join the slack linkedin twitter and instagram to learn more about data science Thanks everyone. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.